find a way to, you know, do something like a greenhouse. I mean, the cold frames are, are certainly nice, but um, y you know that certainly the greenhouse certainly uses a lot of the house heat and, and um, a couple of the design features, I guess. That um, you know, if you're thinking of putting something like it in, obviously you want to face solar south and you want to have a lot of glass so that you're picking up a lot of the uh, sunlight on, on whatever <coughs> days, be they even in February or something, where you get very, you know, often you get very cold but very sunny, clear days, and those days can really be used to get some sunlight into your frame. Um, we put, uh, our, ours is about 10 feet by 14 feet, so it's very small for, for what we use it for. Uh, for so uh, George has figured out systems to raise things huge amounts of seedlings in there to an early stage to move them out, you know, either to other greenhouses we have or before we had out for outdoor greenhouse, freestanding greenhouses, to use them, you know, would move them to our south facing rooms, you know, put tarps down something over the rugs and, and put, you know, flaps of seedlings so you can hardly walk through the room. Can the word um, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Putting things out on our deck, um, again, south facing to, to harden them off a little bit so they're staging whatever kind of space you have somewhere you've got south facing and if you've got any kind of uh, light coming through you're not totally shaded by trees and so forth there are ways to use that <coughs> simple structures to, to enable you to, to get going earlier and, and uh, have more control of the situation one thing we did what I think was helpful was we put a, uh, a the back of the greenhouse the part that you know um, uh, intersects with the house is a cement wall and it's part we poured as part of the foundation but it has four hole, four big holes in it two at the top and two at the bottom and the idea of that is that on days when the greenhouse overheats the hot air will rise and, and pass into the house through those top holes and the, and the cold air can come out of the house through the bottom holes and, and vice versa on cold days you know the house heat can pass out so that's I have no idea I think you know I read it in books and I think it works but I you know don't never measured that and, and, uh, but those kind of things are if you read a book or two on, on greenhouse design I think you'll find lots of ideas that maybe will fit your situation um, I guess you know basically we start an awful lot of the stuff and always have for, for a major small farming operation in that little 14 by 10 greenhouse um, anything you want to talk about this no, I think that's just this one. It's right here, right below us here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're going to go down there. Yeah, I guess you're going to go down and work in there a little bit later and, and uh, <coughs> see how it works. But there's a there's a whole bunch of beds in the front. You know, they get direct sunlight all the time, and there's some there's an area in the back that for a while we had sort of a hardening off area, and now we're using it for storage and other kinds of. I forget what you're using it for feed. You were using it for feed for a while. We were making yeah sprouting grains for. Uh, chickens, yeah, decided not to do that when the rats came in, but, yeah, yeah. so, you know, over the, over the years, we certainly used it in lots of different ways, but, um. yeah, I, I just think it's impressive, because we start onions in February, usually, and we aren't used, using any heat except the sunlight during the day, and then heat from the house, I mean, so it must get cold in there at night. What do you think the night temperature is on cold nights in there? We don't have a thermometer. We really haven't measured it. It's never, we never really worried about a frost day. Actually. Yeah, but we don't use any heat, any other heat mats or yeah. other source of heat except the house. glazed windows and there's a, yeah. there's a little bit of a roof there that, you know, it comes out. So, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's really worked out well. Yeah. And so everybody quite can, uh, you know, certainly respect the wood designs. But, um, yeah, if you're interested, I think it, it, it would be well worth the time to really structure of some sort like that and there's lots of books out there about design and so forth and there's about you know I just happen to some good, good, good lucky ones at the beginning thank you all right yeah now we'll get to the stuff that you're interested in the living stuff <laughs> <laughs> well they're probably That's I know that Jonathan's a designer I don't know about anybody else but are they <laughs> So Claire and I have to practice not talking at the same time. So if we're out in the field, don't talk to one of us while the other one's talking because <laughs> if our mics, we have both have mics on and our we'll go on top of each other for the recording. So try to refrain from talking to one of us when the other one's talking. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Well, we're get, we'll start here, and then we're going to go down to the basement to the greenhouse, and we'll start um, some seeds together. We're going to start our winter squash today. And then we're, we'll go out to the field, and we have some beds that are already prepped. We've already prepped the soil for planting and made our road, and we can seed a bed, and we'll transplant a bed together. So we can talk about how we prep the soil and all of that also as well out there. I don't know if you want to cover that in here or when we're out in um, the field. Why don't we? Why because don't we're, you, we're um, practicing no-till, low-till um, bed making here. So I don't know if you have questions about that. We've been using tarps and we use a lot of mulch and like cardboard and hay. And the area where we're going to be working out here was under a tarp. So. Um, and last year we were using machinery in the field, but this year we've just gone back to doing it all by hand because we've had the soil covered by the tarps or mulch over the winter and early spring. So Why don't you go through here and uh, we can go through this? Go through your stuff and then we can maybe okay. um, go through my stuff and then we can, as questions arise, we can. So for seed, like for our, tr for what we're transplanting into the field, we, what we want is smaller seedlings, we want them to be totally green, like dark green, small, and stout. Um, so we kind of tend to start things a little bit later, I think, than some folks do. Um, like we just started our tomatoes in late April and early May, because we don't want them to be near flowering mm -hmm. while they're in their trays. Um, and so you'll see when we go downstairs that we only use one kind of tray, which is just an open tray. It doesn't have any cells. Um, and that way we can have a lot more volume of soil and we don't have to transplant those seedlings into another container before it's gonna be transplanted in the field. They can, like this, this, the trays that we are seeding into, they can stay, the seedlings are healthy in there until we're putting them out in the field. If you start them in smaller cells or little, they, like germination trays, then you have to transplant into another container and it's going through that transplant chalk twice. Um, we use ideal compost potting soil, which is um, from Mike Lombard and he's in Peterborough, New Hampshire. Um, we order it directly through him, but he delivers when we get the NOFA bulk order. And he also, you can order that soil through the NOFA bulk order in in the big totes or in bags. And yeah, I just like, really like his compost. The texture is really nice and the, the, the moisture, it's kind of a really nice consistency. It's light. Um, yeah, we've been using that for a long time. Did yeah. Do you have any, have you used other potting soils? Or? Oh, I've tried other ones, but yeah, I think one of the things that um, we have a, a mentor guru type that person that we follow, John Kempf, who talks a lot about um, and has done a lot of st studying. He's from Advancing Eco Agriculture, and you'll see him back here later. But he has a podcast. He does, yeah. The Regenerative Agriculture. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and he the he really emphasizes that does that need to have these seedlings be small when they go outside. And m when you start, a lot of people get excited and want to start and have things in the house for like 12 weeks or something and get very excited about putting out these monstrous tomato plants. But what you've done is you've really um, you've really lessened their opportunity to be as successful as they can um, by having them in a situation where, it, first of all, it's oftentimes people will have lights and heat and have them in a very, um, it's a very uh, unnatural situation, I guess. Um, you'll see, if you notice, when, when tomatoes, for example, will germinate in the field, sometimes if you drop the tomato, they'll germinate in the field, and you know when they're ready they, all these things are, you know, really know when to germinate and they're, when they're ready, when the temperature is just right for them. But one of the things about the ideal um, potting soil um, that I hew to is the fact that he doesn't use a lot of um, potassium and um, nit nitrogen. So a lot of people use a lot of fish and a lot of other nitrogen sources to may try to green up their, their seedlings. Mm -hmm. But what we're trying to do at the early stages of a seedling's life is to have more phosphorus and um, calcium in them so that they can build the strong, um, basically build their strong cell walls. Um, and so that's part of, um, 
to what we hew to again. You, we aren't going to have these tall, luxuriant looking plants, but that need to be hardened off. If you have something that has been using a lot of nitrogen early in the system, um, if you put it outside, it, it'll die um, unless it's been hardened off, as it were. Um, but what we try to get, do is to have them just move directly from seed into um, some, some amount of growth into the soil. It saves us a lot of time, and it's also much more healthy for the plants. So um, again, this is contrary to a lot of the um, uh, standard wisdom. We're probably, we're, we're somewhat anti-conventional here on a, on, a number of <laughs> <laughs> on a number of topics, but that's, that's another one where we're, we're not very conventional. Yeah, he just makes really nice, very nice soil. And, and I think our, yeah, it, it, if seedlings are in their trays for four, four to five weeks, they, sh they look really beautiful and healthy, and we don't have them in their trays for, you know, eight to 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're starting it earlier, then they're gonna lose nutrition and have Except to for our onions, right? Yeah, onions are starting it early. It takes a while. I, I did have a question. I was just gonna ask, does that apply to all of the stuff that you plant or just certain types of vegetables? Like, do, do you take the same approach? Just well, the same approach generally, but I think yeah. we take longer with onions and leeks okay. because they um, they take longer to germinate and they take longer to grow. And you've got to get an onion has to be able to bulb. It's got to get all of its green growth on before June 21st when it starts bulbing. And if it doesn't have a lot of um, growth, it won't. It'll make a small a small bulb. Yeah, there's a window um, where you want those long days while it's producing the bulb. Okay. You want yeah the, the yeah you want the onions to be. Um, I guess it's probably May to late June, okay. where you want them getting their green growth on. A lot, yeah, a lot yeah. of growth. And parsley and celery are other things that take a long time, so they end up we end up ha holding onto them longer. But I think the big mistake is when people start their tomatoes, their peppers, their eggplants, any of your squash. If you start that early, I mean, I don't know about where you all live, but you know, we had a frost on the 30th of May last year that mm -hmm. killed a lot of stuff and. I think most of us are in that, maybe not in Belchertown, but um, you know, most of us are in that um, area where it's pretty, um, it gets pretty cold. Northridge, you're, you're better off. You're, you're more lucky where you are, but we're up along here, we're all high and, high and cold. <laughs> yeah. so, so these are, so other things we use when, um, just in, in our seeding um, operation is we um, put in a seed inoculant on all of the seeds, and that's a product from Advancing Eco Agriculture. Um, and that has some nu nutrition in it, and it just enhances, it's a product that's supposed to help enhance germination and support those early roots, the first roots that, the, that are setting on, from the seed. Um, Does it cover the seed with the treatment? We put just it put it in the, the packet. We put it into the, it sprinkles oh. them into the packet. Right, so shake it up? Yeah, this is it right here. Oh, got it, okay. So I already, and we do that for all the seeds we're planting outside as well. We'll just put a little bit of that in the packet. If we happen to forget, we'll sprinkle some on the tray, on the soil. Mm. And then we have a, a drench that we, so we moisten the, tr the soil that we're gonna seed into um, with the transplant drench. Which is on page three. And Transplant we just solution. do that with a watering can. So we'll, when we don't use a lot of that, I think we just use, I mean, maybe, do you think it's even a quarter cup? Something like that, yeah. In a, a you know, a two and a half gallon watering can. Because um, it, at that time, the seed doesn't need a lot of extra nutrition. It's, it's in that potting soil. And, um, but we do want to moisten the, the soil before we plant into it. So then we have worm castings that somebody, several five gallon buckets of worm castings that were given to us. And we have some rock dust and some other amendments that will, some kelp that we've had for a few years that we're kind of just using up and we'll sprinkle those things into our soil as well. Um, seeds, we, yeah, we get seeds from a lot of different suppliers and we s try to save as much of our own as we can and we're, we're gonna try to save 
some seeds from new crops this year that we haven't saved seed from before. I just want to say, Claire noted that um, when we've planted all of our tomatoes, we have just some of them have come up, and the only ones that have come up are the ones that we saved, actually, <laughs> all planted on the same day. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it, it really is important that if you can get to that place mm -hmm. in your growing, if you, and you have really, really nutritious uh, soil and healthy mm -hmm. crops, you're going to have a much better much better uh, seed to start with than if you yeah. buy them. I mean, in the, our the tomato seeds we've also saved, like you can look at them in your hand next to some that we've or gotten from other companies and the size is, you can see a, d a difference in the size mm -hmm. and the quality of the seeds. But I love all the companies we are getting seed from as well and appreciate them. But it is exciting when we yeah, have, are able to save our own. Um, so this, this is just, um, so when we're using the open trays and like onions and leeks, which we need a lot of, um, and 400, it, I mean, it is a lot of seed to put in those open pen 20s, but we kind of fill the greenhouse with onions and leeks when we first start those. So we do have to do, we put in close to 400 seeds in those trays and we just planted those out yesterday and some onions did have some brown just on the tip not that many trays I don't think they looked I think they looked good but quick question what does that brown mean that just the tips of the onion leaves were a little bit brown what, is, what does the brown indicate I don't I maybe that had been in those trays too long okay. unhappiness of one sort or another yeah, yeah. No, some kind of <laughs> some kind of stress yeah. but oh. my onions have I mean the brown tips and yeah some of I mean, I, yeah, no, it's not an interruption. I noticed that we had this one, Patterson, the Patterson onions were really super healthy yesterday, and the Dakota Tears weren't. Um, the Pattersons were strong and green and, and firm, mm -hmm. and the Dakotas were kind of weak, and they had the brown tips on them, too. So those are kinds of things that you can keep track of, that it might be varietal okay. also. Yeah. yeah, I noticed that as well. My Pattersons are really doing oh. well, nice and fresh, and uh -huh. they're used for, like, anemic and small yeah. and yeah. Did you start them at the same time? Yep. Yeah. 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 I'm hoping since we put them out in the field that they'll recover from that yeah, and just yeah. thrive one and yeah, turn get nice and green and grow it once they're back out in the field. But um, so this this chart just tells these are all crops that we do start indoors and a very rough idea of kind of the, our planting schedule. I mean, feel free to ask questions about when we start things. And some of these crops we start pretty much once, like onions and leeks, and then other crops will be starting until late summer mm. that we plant successions. Like mm. lettuce we plant every two weeks. And something like summer squash, we started those, and then we'll start another round of summer squash. Mm -hmm. Or maybe we'll direct seed those. I'm yeah, not sure. Yeah, we'll but do three, three transitions. But and yeah. then like the brassicas, we've already planted out um, a round of kale and collards, cabbage, broccoli. But we'll, all, we'll keep starting those as well through the, through I the think summer. Those are brassicas and lettuce are a good example of something that, that you know, four weeks is really ideal for them. Yeah, and four um, weeks in the trays. And same with squash. I mean, I think you could even get away with three weeks on squash and cucumbers. But yeah, the, it seems like lettuce and the um, brassica family, four weeks is perfect, kind yeah. of, because we don't want them to be really big and mm -hmm. stressed in their trays. And what can we grow? Oh, okay, yeah, good question. It's broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, um, Brussels sprouts, kale, collards, Radishes, turnips, Asian greens, pretty much half of whatever you get is, <laughs> is rather good. <laughs> they always have little brown black seeds. Huh. Yeah, and wha whatever it is, but that all the, the, the leafy broccoli stuff and then the turnipy stuff, turnip Yeah, radish. rutabagas in that family rutabagas too. Rutabagas are in that family too, yeah. There's a lot of stuff in that family. You, I find about a third to the half of what we raise is brassicas. Hmm. Yeah. Do you harden off? Yeah. No, so That's hardening great. off, we, our seedlings are not like babied at all because they're not ever getting artificial heat or they're, um, as soon as they germinate in the basement, we pretty much take them out to the unheated hoop house and, and today we're taking so they're out pretty, they're on their yet. own. We do <laughs> actually, <laughs> we will cover them with remay. If it's like the onions probably went out there, um, mid 
March. Like as soon as they germinate, they uh, go outside to the, to the hoop house. So I mean, we still have a lot of cold nights and we'll cover them with remang, but, and then uncover during the day. So when you put them outside, do you put, do you put the remang over them or the co you know, or covering over them? Yes. Just what you do? Right now, mostly because we're um, trying to get our stuff ready as soon as possible for the CSA, because we're really under the gun. We've got all these people expecting food in two weeks. Um, <laughs> but it helps. The, the, thing you, the thing that we're trying to do is to um, establish good root growth. And you need um, phosphorus accessibility. And the way you get that is to have warm, happy microbes. They basically, phosphorus will not move in the soil. Um, there has to be, you know, it has to be in that area. There's plenty of phosphorus in the soil, but it doesn't move very far. And it needs these phosphorus solubilized, solubilized, solubilizing uh, micro microbes in order to make it accessible to the plants so that they can start their root growth. Um, and so that's what one of the things that Remay does, actually. Or Remay is a spun bonded polyester covering, for those who don't know what that is. But, um, that's what you're doing is you're trying to speed up the microbial activity so that they can get those roots going. And once the roots are growing, then the roots can feed the plants. If they can't, um, and then the plants have to put, you know, send down carbon, and then, then the, that, that every, and you start this whole exchange process. But when they're really small and they sit there, um, Rima is a very wise thing to do in the spring. So yeah, also because the greenhouse is small, like we fill it with onions and leeks, in late February, but then we need to start all of the, we need to start lettuce and kale, collards, and all of those crops. So that's why they, once they germinate, they go out so that we have room in the greenhouse because um, we also want them to get much better quality light. And I was if just they're say, reaching, yeah. if they, they'll get leggy in the greenhouse that downstairs, um, unless they're on the front of the table, uh, the very front table they'll be reaching for light. And so we had some kale that germinated on the back wall and it didn't make it. Like we took it out there, but they pretty much on a cold night just fell over and kind of got and they, those died. We started those again. But yeah, we also want to get to get them to more light. I think that's really young important age. for the uh, avoiding legginess. If you have yeah. legginess, you're gonna pay for it the rest of that plant's life. Yeah. Well, I think that makes so much of a difference. Yeah. I'm at a little room down in my basement, and I, I just for my greenhouse, like it just it just is up now. So, but prior to that, what I was doing is I was starting, I, I warmed that room up in my basement. I don't have heat in my basement, and I was starting the seeds there to get them to germinate. And now, as soon as they start to germinate, mm -hmm. I pull them out and put them in the greenhouse. So I'm just trying to get that warmth going to get them to germinate better, mm -hmm. and, you know, not dealing with the cold with that, and keeping the temperature pretty consistent around. 68, 70, 72 degrees is what I've been doing. It seems to be working pretty well. Yeah. Oh, I think that's a great idea. I mean, there are so many things mm. that we could do better if we had more if infrastructure. Mm. I mean, certainly proper germination temperature is wonderful if you can, if you can do it. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's so that's they, they don't have light, that. but you just let, they don't need light to germinate necessarily. No, I know. And, and so and then you move but initially, on. because I didn't have my greenhouse up, I, I, I didn't have light. Mm -hmm. and, mm. But it, it's a battle, even with really good light. They just still get leggy. Yeah, yeah, I've never used those lights. Yeah. But so mm -hmm. I, now that my greenhouse is up next year, I will not use the yeah. lights hardly at all. Yeah, I think that you year, probably I have did. fast germination with yeah. that more consistent yeah, temperature. Yeah, more consistent germination as well. Yeah. So that's just an experiment I tried this year. But just another thing about germination, if you look over here at this transplant solution, we um, oftentimes can get uh, germination in like three days by using that. We, we really... This stuff is really good to help them really get going. There's a lot of seed products in here. You see, you see the um, calcium also. A lot of um, sea shield, um, sea crop, sea stem are all kelp, seaweed based. Um, sea shield has some um, chitin in it, <coughs> um, and a lot of things to really get that that uh, mycogenesis is a um, more of a, a fungal um, uh, inoculant. Um, I oh. think it also has some dried kelp in it, the, yeah, the powders. Yeah, it probably does, yeah, yeah. So that, again, the kelp and seaweed are, are hugely um, available because they are biostimulants, kelp is, and it'll really cause them to grow really well. Um, so, yeah, quick germination is a, is a good sign that things are going well.
does not have happened to us. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. So on this, back to the seeding, we also don't really count the seeds. Some things, like what we're going to start today, the winter squash, it's very easy to put 50 squash seeds in a tray. <laughs> But like celery is tiny and yeah, lettuce, yeah. lettuce we use the pelleted seed. So it's pretty easy to just, it's, it's more about the spacing that when we're out in the field, then we scoop up a handful of, we just yeah have run our fingers along the bottom of the tray and scoop up a handful of transplants. And you wanna be able to separate them out to drop one plant where you're transplanting. So just having seeding so that you have that spacing that you'll be able to get a plant with some of the soil when you're out in the field. Um, so they're like an inch, uh, three quarters of an inch. Planted 1,200 uh, chives and 4,000 onions yesterday. So um, with a bunch of people. <laughs> so it might seem like we're handling, we're kind of rough with them. Like my husband, when he, th he definitely thinks like it's crazy the way we <laughs> handle our seedlings, but they have a lot of soil and you don't have to like, it's not hard to get them out of those cells. It's, they just, you can just scoop them right up out of their trays and easily separate them to be able to drop one plant, however, what your spacing is gonna be in the field. I feel like in the cells, it's really hard to get them out of there when they're planting. I don't, but anyway, we don't count an exact number for these for things like parsley. We just kind of sprinkle the seeds along the, the tray. Um, Do you do beets and stuff like that? Beets, we, s we have started beets and transplanted those. Um, this year we started beets indoors and transplanted them into the unheated hoop house mm -hmm. to try to get an early crop, but they haven't done very well. But And, and we've also the started stuff? them in the spring and transplanted them into the field. And sometimes they've been successful and sometimes they haven't. This year we, we only direct seeded our beets. Do you do any corn? We don't start the, any of corn indoors. Uh, you can. Yeah. Yeah, we don't start ours indoors. Yeah, yeah, I know people have. Tried, but yeah. It's also the room, like just having room in the greenhouse. The, yeah, the corn germinates really well outside and we, we can just thin it to the spacing that we want very easily. Well, so what's your spacing on your corn? Well, mm -hmm. I, mean, I think we should do more than what in we in do. Inappropriate. <laughs> uh, it's inappropriate. Is there a rationale behind that? <coughs> no, I just all those nice plants always look so nice. <laughs> <laughs> I no, I mean, we have, four foot, we have four foot beds and we have two rows per bed. And I would say probably we should go to a foot or more. But we, we aren't. I, I think we thin to about a foot but maybe sometimes it's more like eight inches. Claire and I have t <laughs> similar tendencies, um, and it, which is not good. I mean, and thinning is very important, but like with beets, if you, like we'll, we direct seed our beets, but we'll thin those and use those as a, as a crop for the CSA. We'll bunch beet greens. Mm. So thinning is important because then we'll have nice beets. They won't be too crowded that we won't have, you know, nicely spaced beets, but yeah, the corn, it's harder to thin for some reason to take those out when you're thinking about. I'll be thinking of you, Jack, though, this year when I do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, what do you plant yours out? What spacing do you plant it for um, out? Um, 10, 12 inches. It, it's yeah. just a six by six block, you know, 30 foot plant. Oh. Yeah, just a yeah. Mm -hmm. So not, not, it doesn't look <coughs> like a big space. If you treat corn properly, you can get four years per, oh per yeah. stalk. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, no, that's what we really need to know when you're doing the right thing. You have to, SRI, SRI, what's that stand for? Um, rice it's intensification. a system of rice intensification. You know, they've learned that, you know, if you plant rice far enough apart or wheat or any of those things, you really get more, in, anything. If you plant it appropriately far apart and you have it healthy, you're gonna get more mm. than you would if you had it three times thicker. Mm just because of the, you know, so they can do their thing. I can't eat the raccoons, so I Well, you I can also that. thin mm. seedlings <laughs> in their trays. If you seed, uh, if you seed whatever container you're growing seedlings in and it, it's too thick and you're not gonna have healthy seedlings, you can just thin them out mm. in that mm. tray too. We haven't had to do that this year, I don't think, but. Have you covered everything? I mean, this is just the process we're gonna do downstairs, drenching our trays, seeding and covering, um, and then watering, um, I mean, we, you don't wanna have your,
craze these too moist because then they'll get the damping off which mm -hmm. is you can kind of see it on a stem the stem is very weak and right before it goes right like before this. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I kind of in in the greenhouse will let the, the top layer of soil look dry it'll look dry it's not dry underneath it's definitely moist underneath but um, I'll wait till it's the top layer is dry before I water those seedlings um, and lights, yeah, we, once things germinate, we move them out so that they're getting much more light so that they grow strong stems. Mm -hmm. They're going to be kind of, yeah, stockier. <coughs> and on cold, when, when they're out in the hoop house, we do cover them on cold nights. We took the remay out because uh, everything that we had in there w would, was tolerant of some cold, but once we move tomatoes, and peppers out to that space, then we'll probably have to bring remay back if we're going to have colder nights for those crops. And we give everything transplant drench again when we're planting out in, into the field. And we're going to do that today. Yeah, I'll show we'll you how that. we do that today. And yeah, we have, we've already prepped the beds, but we can also talk about soil preparation more. I just want to talk really quickly about the, um, we, do, we do use a lot of foliar um, feeding and you can, sh downstairs you can see all the jugs and stuff we have. I think that AEA now has some consumer, more consumer products where you can get the, everything you want from one jug and you don't have to get all these yeah, things and put it together. But there's another company, um, Agrodynamics, which sells a, a plant sure, which is a reasonable thing that you can use to, um, you know, for, for foliar feeding. I, we didn't ever do foliar feeding until in the last six, eight years. And we just have, it's one of those things that's really an upgrade for us because they have much, much healthier food. One of our C CSA members was just writing in and said, yeah, I'm, I can't wait again because your food is just, I don't remember the word she used, but it was um, uh, outstandingly, um, the taste of our food is, is just hi much higher quality than most people are used to, and it has a lot to do with, I mean, all the, of course, all the no-till and low-till and mulching and cover cropping and all the other things that we do too, but I think this is another thing add on on top of that that just makes this stuff really good. I guess I have a basic question. Do you mean that literally, like you're feeding the plants through you their leaves? You feed them plant through their leaves, yes. They, they feed the phyllosphere. Mm -hmm. um, they actually can, they, they can take food up for the root, through the roots, um, but they also can take it up through the leaf from the leaf the structure itself um, they have um, stomata underneath under the leaf and but some of them ha they have some stomata on top too um, and yeah there's a some percentage of um, feeding where it can actually they can the microbes live everywhere on the plant so they wherever they live they can they can work with these things um, to make it make it work so anyway this is what we do I, I had I put on here also a couple of things we had uh, earworm problems a couple years ago and so our consultant gave us this uh, corn earworm control thing, the silken folio, which I used last year. I think I had one earworm last year, just mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. And then slug food, which we, we didn't really have. After the springtime, we had serious slug problems with our heavy mulch. And um, after the springtime last year, we never saw another slug yeah. on the plant. So Why do slugs get sick? Well, it kills them. <laughs> it's actually, it, 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 whatever it does. It kills the the, the, the cheap, the cheap We're not feeding the bottom the is important. Yeah, the, the beer. Um, I don't know, you know, uh, these, these nice mix of, of, and I don't know my minerals well enough, but the copper and the boron and the iron and the phosphorus have some, something that they do to help make them repel the slugs. You could make the plants stronger too. Yeah, this which cheap, helps them repel the plants this essentially. Cheap uh, the, the chitin yeah. is, which is like little daggers. What's that? The chitin in the sea crop is also oh, a little the, the sea shield, yeah. That just breaks apart their body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, so we now we use the foliar, our backpack sprayer, to put down the drench when we're planting. But for many years, we just took out a watering can and we took mm. off, we took the nozzle off the watering can, and just put a you know poured in the transplant drench, filled it with a hose, and would walk down the furrow with the drench to get. So it's still, I mean, we did that for a long time, and 
it worked well just to get that transplant trench into the furrows. And I mean, now it, it, we're doing something that's much quicker, but that is a good option if you don't have a backpack sprayer. I think the one thing that I would like to get across is that if you can do everything you can uh, to make it really the, the best opportunity for your plants to get started, then you know you, it pays the dividend for the rest of the year. That's really um, you know what we hope to hope to get across today. So should we head down? Yeah. Okay. We're able to tolerate colder temperatures out there because um, because the greenhouse is really um, it, there's a lot of a lot of heat in this in the soil. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, on the ground has been perfect. At yeah. some point, we did put shelves yeah. that were kind of built into the frame, okay. and so but they were too close to that plastic. So uh, like the shelf was here, and then yeah. the trays were in that yeah. they didn't do well up there. Okay. It, was, it was too, too hot, hot during the day and too cold way at too night. Way too hot during yeah. the day. Um, so you want the trays to be? We fill them pretty much right up to the top. We'll, we'll just be adding soil to cover, but we want to start with the trays nice and full so that they have all the nutrition they need and they won't be become root bound. All right, and then these are ready, Julie? Yeah, just a little bit. Oh, I'll there. get the, these things. So this is some worm castings. You never can go wrong with worm castings if you ever have <laughs> access to them. So all of these things, we just them. kind of sprinkle, <laughs> sprinkle some on top. Any, any reason why you wouldn't put that into the seed mix? Well, we could, but we, we just have so few, so a little bit. We just have someone gave it to us a small amount. <laughs> yeah, I'll, so just maybe. a little top. Dressing. I can do that. Yeah, a little top dressing, and then this is some kelp we found somewhere. Like Claire said, we're using it up. So. Um, kelp is always good. Um, worm castings are always good. Rock dust, we um, get basalt rock is parent rock around here in this part of the world, and um, we we get last year we got 22 tons of that and spread it all over our farm. Um, it's got 90 minerals in it, um, and it it really does nice things for conditioning soil and. Again, we always want to get as many minerals into our. That's what the minerals is what makes things taste good and makes them heavier and denser. Is that it? Yeah. And so Ari made up this drench, which this has our transplant drench and just what we say is a glug, but about a quarter cup, and and then the inoculant, the microgenesis. Anytime you want to use inoculants, they all need to be added at the last minute because mm -hmm. once they start, once they get wet, they start to work. So they, you know, they'll be good for three or four hours, but after that, they, you, you know, they'll they'll be dead. So we're gonna put these over here and we'll oh, move into our. No, no, you're not at all. I ordered those from. They were from Gardner's Supply. I do. I put some out on the field. I think up in Burlington, Vermont. What do I mean? Do you guys I mean, they have a big website. They have a website with, uh, with a, lo a lot of online ordering. Um, but I know they do have a store. But I just ordered them because we had some other really nice three-gallon watering cans, but they were really old and have cracked. And we used them for many years, even though they were Glory. not that great anymore, but finally I ordered I those two, mm -hmm. which was the biggest size I could find for a watering can. I think yeah. it's two and a half gallons. I've always gotten, you know, an expensive one from yeah. like the box stores and they don't work. No. Sure they don't have a nice these work nice. I'm happy with these so far. Really nice. Don't know how long they'll last. <laughs> <laughs> it is just plastic. Yeah, they do. All right, so the seeds, would everyone like to, to do a tray? Of course they would. <laughs> <laughs> this is one we're growing. Um, oh, burpees butterbush. Yeah. That's a great variety. Do you want, will you do these? Uh, I can do yes. those. I have done those so before. Yeah, 50 per tray, which is really easy just to kind of this is a uh, ten, do ten, 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 ten down, five across. Okay. Here you go. We'll Very do two good. of those. Okay. And uh, I usually do these about a half inch deep. 
Does well, we just or... place them on the just soil, on the surface? Okay. and then after we cover them, we'll press them down. Got it. Okay. Would anyone else want to see some over yeah. here? Sure. Here, yeah, you all. Are you particular? Or do you do you do? You all can work together. Or just flat? I just lay it flat. Okay. Or, yeah, I just drop it down. Yep. Ari, we're starting your. Do you, would you like to start yours? What that you saved. Oh wow! <laughs> How much is that? Ten, Ten down and five. Ten across. down and five across. Okay. All right, would you like to do one? So this tray right here, th these are s all seeds that we've saved. Oh. Here you what, this, you okay, I'll pour some in your hand if you want. And I, so I've already used the inoculant on all the seeds. Just let me know if you need more seed. Where's the source for inoculant? That's from AEA. Where are the other trays? You, got, you are all seed in here. Let me get this one. Here, do you want to do this one, Jonathan? More trays here. Okay. Yeah, that's perfect. There you go. Great baking. I don't know how many that is. Just put them back in the envelope. Sure. Lori, would you like to do one? We need one more. I'm just You're here to watch. Gathering. We'll <laughs> do this when I come here. I promise I'll let the <laughs> Yes. Oh, good. We love when there's a supervisor. <laughs> here, I think you take this one out of the way. Yeah, don't worry about exact spacing. Yeah. We're just doing 50. So t you can, I'll go 10 down. I'll just sort of. Estimate the the spacing I need to have ten rows. Ten, ten down. Okay. Yeah. Where's the watering can? Oh, here it is. Okay. And if you drop an extra seed, don't worry about it. You don't need to go pick it back out. Ari, do you need, do you know anyone who need, who wants some butternut seed? I don't know, butternut squash are pretty big. I know. <laughs> if you get one done, bring it to me, and we'll do the next step These over here. Only get about three, the vines are just two or three feet. Yeah. They just take up very little space. And they're supposed to be a smaller it's a, it's squash, but ours were thing. pretty big last year. I, I don't know if they were stressed at some, t at some dot time during the season or if when they were first planted, but they produced, it wasn't a compact squash. This one here, okay. just like this pound. I mean, it mm -hmm. definitely mm -hmm. wasn't a one to, you know, one to two pounder. I was gonna. Do you want some of those seeds, <laughs> Jack? Do you have that variety? Thank you. Yeah. What? Okay. These need to go up against the wall, sideways. It's also a very um, early maturing variety. Just be very gentle. Very Oh, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to pat that in? Okay, so once you're done, oh, do you need more seed? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Here you go. Here, move your self that way. Yeah, here you go. Thank you. Yeah, we just sprinkle soil on top and then press down because you want the seed to have good contact with the soil so there's not like sitting in an air pocket. But I mean, you could also do this. You could press them down here too. But I'm digging mine out with the plastic spoon Thank you. Sure. All right, Julie's going to give you soil to okay. cover. Are you putting them on the ground now so that we can? Yeah, because we're going to drench them again. 
so, um, let's see if we can do it, Ari. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think we can do it. Ooh. I think I can get it. Yeah, I can get this. Alright, will you put it just right sure. going alongside that one? Um, yeah, as long as she's not talking, yeah. I can talk. Um, yeah, we'll just, we actually didn't use this at all this year, but our son who was doing his office was over there. He was using the fireplace. So go ahead and put that on there. Um, so sometimes I have used this when it got really cold. Um, it's upstairs. It, it goes upstairs nicely, and it also warms us up on a really cold night. So it's nice to have, but I don't think we lit it once this year. I know. I love yeah, when we use this, though. Yeah, but yeah. Pat it in. I never use it. You want <laughs> it's so seed nice. Seed to soil contact. You want to make sure that's nice and strong. Is there another one? Come on, Jack. And you're being too. Well, he had to, he had to do two. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> two butter bushels. Here, we'll, almost done. Well, Josh, almost will done. you cover this one? Sure. Thank you. <laughs> so I saved a lot of okay, seed Jack, from this it. last year, but Heron Breen at, uh, at Fedco sent me some more. So I want to grow it again to see how it does, to see if we get more of that, that smaller, because huh. the smaller size butternut would be nice for, d we do different size shares. Yeah, oh, oh absolutely. So a it, it for is, a small share, it, it is having a, a smaller it squash. It is a smaller butternut, I should believe it's heavier. Than yeah, I feel like we had some really big butternuts. Huh. Oh my gosh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they mutated. So maybe they, did they cross? But we didn't grow the other one last didn't year. We didn't grow the, the, the big Waltham. The yeah, this year we're gonna grow a Waltham type. I might try hand pollinating some because I still want to save seeds. Oh, we have three dogs. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. But, um, Excellent. But we plant our corn close to the house. So, yes, anyway, take it over to Julie. Because the uh, raccoons, if, they're, if it's like we've planted corn out there and had it totally taken away from us, but it's right near the house, they, no, Julie, they I didn't don't come. Press, want me to press them in? No, no, you can in a minute. As soon as I do this, you can pop it, press it down like this. Yep. This will go. Yep. I'll do your hand side. You can do the other. Do you have any trouble with woodchuck? No, it's all our nice dogs and, and our cats too. Oh, the Skippy's just. Isn't Skippy? Isn't she sweet? <laughs> when the, what's coming up? Yeah. We might have to thin it. I'll see. Okay. Yeah, because there's. Uh -huh. trying to get you're trying to get some of the tra the soil that you yeah have. we want to have some soil with each transplant it's not in like a tight little I'm plug sure the onions, but I can be a little bit less worried about yeah the that. onions Seems the roots taste. kind of all separate together I wouldn't say that the onions yesterday were in like a ball of soil but we can they show kind that of today when we put the brassicas in we can show how we do that yeah yeah why don't you head out and yeah are we we're gonna carry trays right Yes, and he, um, the seeds you need later. Right oh, I'm going to get. I'm going to get those. Okay. So just go out that way, and you'll see on the ground is some trays that need to be carried out to the hoop house. And Ari or Maya will show you which word, what, or how to do that, where to get, where to get there. Yeah. Oops, sorry. And uh, so I put them out, and then we had, I did put some Rene over it, but I could have probably put some hoop stuff with, because you had some frost, put down to 20. Uh-huh. I got a lot of damage to my teeth. 
Okay, start with another bat. Inside or out? Outside. Yeah. I have not had any luck. I don't know that I've even tried peas in the house, but. Um, yeah, I started them in that basement area. Yeah. They're real leggy because it was a little bit too cool. And then I put them out, but then we had that cold snap the night I put them out. I did put roommate over them, but the roommate is touching them. Yeah. So I, I should have put heat screen. Froze on them. But I, it just, you know, we didn't do that. Yeah. So you can see we grow a lot of stuff in the beds, and then uh, these are the pathways that we we double double task here. Who's in charge of lettuce? Lettuce is over here. Oh, okay. I have some. Step on anything? Yeah. There you go. Good. So yeah, watch your feet. Come in back if you can. Come back in. Uh, thank you in the middle bed, but um, we're, we're constantly trying to do a lot of different things at once. As you can see, this is our, our for our first week of the CSA, we're gonna hopefully have um, kale for people and here, here Jack, and um, some chard and some of this lettuce and spinach in here. And then when, when we're done with those crops, we'll um, put tomatoes in here over the summer. One more Jack, there we go. This mint, this peppermint, uh, interestingly, we had planted along the outside of the house, but it's migrated in where it's nice and warm for it. So <laughs> got a lot of nice mint here too. But these are all seedlings that are in there on the way to going out. Um, and you see, sometimes we don't have that great of germination. These are, I think these are all celeries. And so what we'll do, um, I think what we've, we've gotten better at is just like, oh, it didn't germinate well, start another one and you know get right on it and stay on top of, um, making sure that we have enough of everything that we need uh, to go out. Um, so this will get kind of hot in here during the day. And then you'll notice that pretty soon, and we did start doing it, we started bringing stuff out and leaving them in front of the house, sorry, so it doesn't get too hot. Um, we have a, a one more bed of onions to plant. So we took all those out of the house and we we're gonna plant some other things that are on the right-hand side. Um, but, um, you know, we've been able to, I think it's a, we all are in situations that aren't necessarily totally ideal. And so trying to figure out how to work with how much money you have and how much infrastructure you have and um, all the various pieces of it is, is part, of, uh, part of the fun game of farming. <laughs> any thoughts, any questions in here? Mm -hmm. So the seedlings, no, in the summer, we usually put our seedlings out in the back. That's the north side. So they get some sun, but not so much sun. This is the south side, too much sun for the seedlings. So we'll start them in the basement and then move them out um, behind this house and behind the other house um, to keep them somewhat partially shaded. Um, that can be problematic with summer seedlings, but most we don't have that many. It's lettuce and some brassicas usually in the summertime that we're trying to, trying to get ready to go in. Um, the kale and the chard we put in, uh, oh, chard's over here. We put that in in the spring, um, in, in, in February. That, that chard plant right there you see over in the kale, that one was actually one we left that um, overwintered. It died back, but it then it came back out of the root. There are a few. Any, any chard that you see in that bed is all just overwintered. The lettuce, um, I'm not sure how that got there, but it's all kind of volunteer. It's <laughs> nice lettuce, though, I, you know. That's wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the spinach, some of the spinach, these older looking, crappy looking spinach was overwintered and it's kind of done its thing and some of this other newer stuff has been, was planted earlier. I mean later, you know, in February, March. So um, we try to, I, you know, this hasn't been our best year for getting as much possible production out of the in-ground hoop, hoop, hoop houses, but it's been an okay year for that. Um, I would say someone was saying, "Well, you should do a, a, a greenhouse, a, you know, hoop house workshop." And I, I don't think either Claire or I feel like we've got it yet all the 
enough together to say we really have that that piece together so we don't we're not ready to do that workshop yet but <laughs> <laughs> this um drench setup that you see here um it's a there's a situation we can actually maybe we should what should we walk out the back and show them the drench operation because yeah. um, you need something to to water your hoop houses for sure if you're going to grow anything in them um, and so we have a very simple system that uh, allows us to add a little fertility and water as needed. So that's over here. And this is where we put our, in the summertime, we put these back here where there's a little less sun. Oh, where did I take? Oh, where is it? Oh, it's at the, uh, it's at the uh, north, north, south. I guess we don't have it right here. We'll walk, okay. we'll walk out and catch it on the way out. Yeah, we need to get um, the sprayer and mm -hmm. the hose, the coupling piece as well. Okay. Can somebody who's hefty grab the sprayer out of the garage? This person right here, this tall person who just <laughs> turned his head the other way. <laughs> who, me? Th there's a pair of headphones on it, too. Th bring those also. They're hooked on it, I think, and then right? We, Do everything you have the drench? else we need is in the front of the yellow house. Okay, you, you brought the drench out. Yeah. Yeah, great. So this is um, our drenching system for, for feeding the hoop houses we just hook up the hose to this and we add in the the liquid fertilizer into here and then fill this with water and it just there's a a tube here and a filter that sucks up the fertilizer and slowly adds it into the water system you can also just use this for watering you don't have to use it for fertilizing but we fertilize how do we do each house like once a week yeah when the weather's cooler but yeah. you know twice a week when it's sunny and hot so would you do it by naturally water flow and suction yes yes it just yeah it, i think it goes around and it, it pulls it up as it goes back through so the green hose is flowing in and then it's sucking through the small hose into the water system. and the green hose is adding water as well well, this is the green hose is just adding water to keep the um, fertilizer from getting sticky and um, keep that keep this clean and help keep that ho that feeding hose clean. But this is the this this goes to the houses, and this side comes from the hydrant. Yeah. What do we have to do? Suck that out every winter? Um, well, no, it's pretty good if we if we just keep a little bit of a trickle with that short hose, it'll keep it clean. But if you don't, it, it will plug up. Yeah, that's, that, that's something we've learned to do. Oh, we bring it in. Oh, in the, in the wintertime, we don't water. Yeah. So this is what we did yesterday. All this uh, chard here and onions. Um, we had this. You can see where the cardboard is over there. We had uh, those tarps on, this, on the uh, south side of these, this whole section. And, but they were only 100 feet long, so we put cardboard and hay on this side of things. We've had some struggles with grass coming back. Mm -hmm. And so the cardboard and hay we just pulled off to the side here, except for where we put in potatoes over where Franny is there. Those rows are our potatoes. <laughs> pull, just pulled enough aside so that when the potatoes come up, we'll just lay the cardboard back in right up. We'll, we'll probably furrow those potatoes. Dingo, don't go through the beds, please. Um, we'll furrow the potatoes and then we'll add cardboard and then hay up right up next to them to um, you know get them in there really nice and in good mulch. Um, uh -oh. so <laughs> um, and then the, the uh, chard here and then these onions are in the last three beds. Probably we might put down a little bit of hay mulch around the chard or we might just wait when it gets tall enough we might just put in some clover around that to be a little bit of a um <laughs> <laughs> yeah she's like oh i just wanted you to pet me <laughs> uh, our, our biggest um i think our goal here is to have as much stuff um either mulched or in in uh, undersown cover crops as possible for for mat matters for the matter of trying to keep um, weeds down, but also for building the soil too. So yeah, I mean last year one of the um, there's a there's a great the year before um, was oh, 
so I don't talk on top. There's a, there's a great um, uh, ag consultant, Christine Jones, who you should look up. She has a website called Amazing Carbon, but she's very good at discussing the, the value of cover crops and um, the carbon pathways and the phosphorus. If you want to understand how phosphorus works, we've got a whole thing on that and one on nitrogen also, really understanding how these things work. Um, but she's really into uh, four families of cover crops a as an undersow to really build diversity. Um, just like anybody who's, if you study anything about the human gut biome and wanting to have a lot of diverse um, microbes in your stomach, you want to have those in the field too and that just really builds um, much healthier crops, much healthier soil. So you're doing, you know, you're doing two things at once, building, a, bu building your soil and, and sequestering some carbon, but also um, building really healthy crops that have more access to more minerals to have a richer, uh, richer so resource base. Should we go? Yes. Franny does uh, tick removal for the other two dogs. <laughs> I, and I, ha I have to do her every day, every afternoon. I do Franny because those, <laughs> those guys don't take care of her back. Yeah, Baldwin's. But I wanted one of the things we did, Jack, is we put down all this massive amounts of wood chips, uh -huh. um, first cardboard and then chips, and then oh, yeah. um, on top of the wood chips, we we um, scattered a bunch of cover crops, perennial cover crops, so you'll see a lot of germination on top of the soil. The idea is that we're going to grow up all these perennials up underneath the tree. Just right on top of the rock? Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. So, the yeah, <laughs> that was again another, it uh, was a mix, it was a perennial pollinator mix, is that what mm -hmm. we call that one? From, again, from green cover. Um, and we sprayed it with this, this, and we did it on a rainy day. And the wood chips all already were somewhat broken down, which was really helpful. Um, but they mostly they germinate pretty well. I think most of these trees are going to be nicely, nicely cover cropped. So that'll bring in a lot of different pollinators yeah, beneficial. and beneficial yeah, insects okay, that will yeah. really support these trees. Next week. Yeah. Yeah, this is a bald one we put in in 1987. Um, this is a, one of my favorite trees here. What, th what time is it? It's 11.20. I would say oh. it's almost perfect. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Jonathan, we bring that sprayer over here? So we're going to... I'll get the water. We have two beds here that we've already prepped with rows for planting. And the first one with four rows, we're going to see direct seed arugula. And then this bed here, which gets kind of... You can put those narrow down at the end and might go down to two rows yeah. at the end. Yeah, if you want. We have this side of the field prepped and this side, and where we came together, it's yeah, not straight. But anyway, this is going to be some um, cauliflower and broccoli transplants. So the first thing we're going to do is put our um, drench and inoculant in, down into the furrows and. Where's the basket? What? Yeah, I'll turn it off right now. <laughs> or I'll wait till I start spraying. Did you put water right through the thing? Yeah. going too fast. We use a, a quart per tank when we're doing the transplant then. And this has different settings, so you can have it on a fine mist or you can have it um, Heavier, where it's a much bigger bucket. Oh, open. So, <laughs> oh, is it going out? <laughs> so I'm gonna have it opened up all the way so it, it empties the tank really quickly and gets more m moisture into those furrows. Like when we're spraying the the crops with the folio, they get a weekly folio. We have it on a much finer mist. This is coming out. Of, of, 
All right, I'll need someone to help me. We usually we have the truck out here and I can put it on from the truck, but I think this I'll guy was going to help you right here. Yeah, will you just help me get it on after I start it? Does somebody want to help me uh, plant some arugula? You want to? Okay. Um, do you want to just grab a handful? Yep. And yeah. then, and then we're gonna walk down the pathway. Okay, I'll follow you. And you can actually walk across from me. Um, Ari, are you able to plant right now? Why don't you do an inside row? Anybody else want to plant? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Dan. Uh, grab a grab a handful. You can drop those. Um, we're gonna all go down, and each of us do our own row. Okay? We're just gonna sprinkle a little bit as we go. Yep. Yep. So, um, Zach, why don't you go on my side? Dan, you go with Ari, and. Do this outside row like this, okay, and you can. I'll do the inside row. Yep, just walk and walk and spread. Okay. And then, fin and then thinning out is like, can we move some after? Um, we might if they're too crowded. Yes. It's uh, you get this, you get really good at uh, walking and and dropping. Yeah, I'm actually dropping it too now. You want to just keep walking. Okay, I'll give you my seeds. You can turn back. All right. Do you guys have enough? Yeah. Oh, Jack's got some. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Great. And then, so, so oh, you're on the. You, you, oh, oh, the hose? We're going to yep. use the hose to cover yep. over? Yeah, just go straight up. It'll be all good. <laughs> what's going to go in here? That's already been planted yesterday, oh, those beets. Are you still turned off? I'm yeah. gonna just. Oh, you are. No, you're. Are you turned? Your thing's turned off. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Somebody else want to get a hoe, and I'll show you how to cover these. You want got got one, Jack? So we just. You see how we just spread them in those rows, and now we're just gonna go through and. Um, Jack, if you want to go through there. Yeah, okay, you go through there, and we're just gonna go like this. Yep. And that's pretty much all you have to do, except for the bed prep, which took a long time, but. We didn't have time to show you how to do that today. <laughs> we did. You see these things over here, those sticks and strings. We had those, um, we have a 20 inch, we measure a 20 inch pathway and then a 48 inch bed. Um, and then so within the caged area, we, um, 
first hole out any grass that's still left, which sometimes there is, um, and then rake it all out as well as we can to the sides and then put in our, you know, requisite number of rows. Um, it's, it's been interesting to go to the no-till method. It feels like the, the soil has responded so well to that um, without using the machinery and really improved our, our soil structure, but also our quality and quantity. Yeah, just put them in the pathway. We come, come through it various times and put them on the wall. My biggest problem is when the, we get these seeds that are small, I can't see them, so I have to just guess that I'm covering. Yeah. No. So that's the arugula. I'm going to start laying out these plants and um, maybe Ari, you're free enough to be able to help show people how to get them in. The, the store with a brassica plant, now, here's, a, uh, here's an example of a cell, right? I find them really hard to get out of these cells too. <laughs> this is a friend gave us these. Um, but with a brassica plant, we want to plant it right up, under, right up to under here where all this t stuff has to be covered under the soil, otherwise the plant will fall over. So I'm going to lay a few out, and then um, um, maybe you can help people plant. You want me to lay out? Um, no, if you help help some people plant, I'll okay. I'll lay them out for you. Yeah. Someone can call me, carry those over for me if you want. Sorry. Indicated that's what she wants. Yes, exactly. Okay. So you, you hop in. Yeah. You got it. All right. There's the first one. So yeah, one okay. thing is that if you don't step in the sand, yeah. if you can just step in the pathway right here, um, it's a bit hard to see without everything. But yeah, or yeah, and yeah, because we don't really want to be stepping. In so the take your other. Don't take step there. There you go. Exactly. You step got on it. the hay, in other words. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Okay. Because we, we, we want to be able to kill the plant. There's the first. Uh -huh. Second. I got my fingers out of the others. I wanted to get this um, tag with it. Here we go. Yeah. Um, about every foot or so. Oh, I don't know. I, don't, I think it's more than a foot, isn't it? I would say that's more like 24. Uh, yeah, Oops, that one broke off. Okay. Um, would you bring me a box of... Par of uh, uh, broccoli, though, sure. Josh. Oh, 
Here you go. Oh, this is going to be interesting. This is all the flat. But I, see, I want this is really, I want you to see how you're getting these out. What's in it? Yeah. Bottom, yeah. That looks this great. is a technique I have never used before. Yeah, so we just go in here like this and grab out the... Oh, okay, you're just clamshell. You're just digging out a yeah. bunch with your hands. And then yeah. you just separate as you go? Yep. You can also, if the stem is very okay. long, lay it sideways. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing for us is that we just don't have the space um, to have them all individual like that. When we're, we're planting thousands and thousands and thousands of seedlings every year, so. Oh, um, yeah, only, you know, giving them the space when they need it, but not until they do. When do you stop using the cover? The cover? Oh, the, that cover? Um, I think probably around June 1st or so. It, it depends, I guess. Um, you know, it, when it starts getting hot and um, it, or they get started getting too tall, that the cover will, you know, bend them and stuff like that. Yeah, it's not only just frost. It's really the plants, again, the microbes oh, who are, are the real partners in making this in all happen. A bit deeper. They can't work when it gets too cold. They're just I mean like people, essentially. They're that looks really, and then just pat it, right yeah, word? you put your hands that on either that, side and pat right it word? down after you plant. Well, I mean, they're not like, um, that's, yeah, that you know, they're perfect. not like snakes. They, they, they need warmth in order to do their job. And so Very responsive to temperature. we want to keep them, keep them as warm as possible. And also, you know, at, of course, as the season progresses, we want them to make sure that they're not too hot. And that's why mulch is really a good thing. The mulch will really keep the soil at a nice even temperature. Um, and it also meet out the, the, the uh, moisture as you need it. Um, so I, I can't speak highly enough of, for mulch. Um, whatever you have, yeah. I mean, hay will grow, yeah. leaves will blow away, straw is extremely expensive, you know, <laughs> whatever you can get. And oftentimes, like all that hay you saw, we, whoops, we used that hay. Pull it off, we're gonna reuse it again. Behind those hoop houses that's um, completely covered in cardboard and hay, and we're gonna uh, take that off in order to plant underneath that and we'll u reuse that to mulch our, our potatoes probably or some more of our perennial crops. Mulch is a really important and somewhat difficult sometimes thing to get enough of. I don't, I su suspect they can get it for you. There's a, there's a nice company that we get a lot of our um, supplies from it's called Brookdale Fruit Farm in Hollis, New Hampshire. Um, and they um, they really have uh, actually we got these black plastic bags from uh, Farmer Friend, right? Is that right, Claire? One set was from Farmer Friend and then some from Uline. Uh, we put actually got a pile of sand to, to do that with, put sand on them in them. Um, so you know shop around but um, but uh, Brookdale probably has sand. They do have sandbags. I think the better I think the deal, deal was better elsewhere this year, so we went somewhere else. But yeah. What's that? Oh well, it's not too late. Yeah, there's. It's never too late, and there are always throughout the season you can continue to start things, and you know some things you can't obviously that are too long season, but. Like I said, these brassicas, all the lettuce, almost all the brassicas, the things like turnips and rutabagas, those do better actually um, in July. Um, so they're just a lot. I think one of the things to get excited about is, as a grower is that you can continue to plant all the way up through the beginning of September. Um, and really, whether you're doing it for sale or for yourself, you can get a lot more food um, by succession planting and um, and having the um, 
you know, the presence of mind, I guess, to yank things when they're not looking good also and, and take them out and start something else there. <laughs> That's hard sometimes, trying to, um, you know, keep things going sometimes when you want to not give up on them, but. All right. So they end up with, these end up with pretty much a ball of some, of some dirt on them. Mm -hmm, yeah. And then um, it's another interesting thing. I think I said this in the uh, write-up that this is a, a leaf day in the biodynamic calendar. And one of the things that if you follow the biodynamic calendar at all is that on a day like this, you see it's either going to be rainy or it's going to be very overcast. Um, and I don't really understand how all that works, but there are people who've been studying these things astrologically for, you know, well, thousands of years. Here. I didn't and as I you, you, you want to be planting, you want to be planting on a day where you're going to either have a rainstorm next soon, or yeah. it's going to be really cloudy and oh, well, conducive for them to get into the ground and not get burnt up by the sun. Somebody else want to come down and help plant? You want to come down here? You can come down maybe around and. These root systems look very healthy. Good, Jack. I what Long, I have, you know, yeah, I like the color of the plants. Yeah, I find the they're just it's oops. Just beautiful green too. It's uh, <laughs> amazing. It's you know it's had like two and a half inches deep since uh, 1020, 2010, whatever the hell. It's 1020 or 2010? 1020. <laughs> Ten four. My my dad was a vet. We always used the two way radio. Ten four is okay. Ten twenty. I forget what that was. What that meant. So how much food did you? Well, that person that person put a lot in that tray. So we have a lot of us planting, and some of us are are. are um, more meticulous than others. I can see that you're a very meticulous person. Some of us, on, like myself, tend to go like this. Oh, broadcast. Did you want to plant some? Yeah, I was going to. Here, let me move up out of your way. That's all right. This is the day that. <laughs> there you go. Can I put these in another row? Or? No, we're Can done. So I'm going to put this, I'm just going to pull this aside, no, Kristen, uh, like this. Um, and, and then we want to get the dirt up around it and push it in. Yeah, so it's nice and then watch your feet behind you too. Right and we don't have anything in there right now, but um, 50 lettuce trees and right up around uh, up where the. I put I put holes in the bottom. Let's see if we can get in a little deeper. Um, what do you have there? Interesting. I guess that's all right. Let's get a little more dirt around it. Let's do that one. I'll do this one. So you can kind of dig a little hole sometimes for it. And then get it all in nice and deep. You're done with this? Yep. I guess I have it on here. Like that. I don't see that much. Yeah. Okay, let's get a little deeper, okay? Awesome. Right up around those. Those are cotyledon leaves, and we don't need to really oh, okay. protect them. Um, the problem with these brassicas is if they're not Air in deep root. enough, they fall over and when they get there. And you'll transplant them at that? A little bit too damp, Dan. Yours is a little bit too, too high, a, also. A smaller no, cell. No, uh, other way. Mm. And then I go from the cell not, to not the deep enough. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I've never put them straight in. Yeah, that's good. Try that. I mean, they, yeah. <laughs> they could take only 10 if it doesn't right. basil. basil. Yeah, I mean, our basil yeah, is you definitely get rid smaller when we transplant it than, like, what I see at store, like, other transplants but does it have true leaves yeah oh yeah it has true leaves but it's not like big full leaves uh -huh. like yeah. that yeah. but it does it does really well yeah i mean last year it, it wasn't it didn't we should have planted a succession because it didn't go for very long it did end up getting diseased but what's that the basil, basil. Had looked mm, yeah we had a bad basil year the year before was fantastic who knows? <laughs> yeah, year. exactly. It's, it's very biennial. And here's our nice dandelion crops. Isn't this beautiful? It's beautiful. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I have a woodchuck that would just love that. <laughs> We've had cows on here. Well, actually, we run our, our meat birds and layers on this field now, but we've also run cows a lot. And 
you can see it's really nice, beautiful, healthy soil. So, uh, so we have um, we have uh, 17 more minutes actually. So, what else do people want to ask about? Yep. How much of your electricity is generated by the solar dome? Um, Jack is the one who pays the electric bill, and I know that sometimes we cover everything, uh -huh. and sometimes we don't. But I can't tell you. You'd have to ask him. Oh. Yeah. So, but we have eight freezers. Mm -hmm. um, okay. That's our big thing, and yes. we run the water a lot. The mm -hmm. water pump, mm -hmm. and yep. then during the season where we're we have brooding chicks right now, and we'll be brooding through the end of July. So that takes a lot of electricity, and mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we can, I'm happy to have that. It's over on the stone wall where you can't really doesn't really causing any trouble there. Not it's not land that we could be using to grow uh -huh, something. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So. When will you put in your winter squash? Um, probably around the first. No, actually, after the last frost. No. <laughs> not not. Yeah, I guess yeah. we did that. We Three did it all that day. We planted it on Friday, and it frosted Saturday night, I think, <laughs> and oh, killed a bunch yeah. of it. That's the same happened. Same yeah, thing happened. yeah. Ju June first is twenty nine degrees. Right, right, yeah. right, right, right. <laughs> wait till June fifth this year. <laughs> Maybe we will too. This has been a warmer year, though. I mean, the yeah. apples are blossoming much, much yeah. earlier than but they were last gonna, year. I mean, cool weather the last couple of weeks, and it's going to continue for a while. May's going to be cooler than normal. That's that's not Nature bad. Nature seeks a balance. Yeah, Very I'm fast, I'm happy for I'm happy for it to stay like it is. Yeah, me too. Forty at night <laughs> Same. and yeah, fifty-five yeah. at the day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's potluck. You want to get the jump on the season, and you want to get ahead and get some things going so you can get on something else and. <laughs> We always plant our tomatoes well around the 10th. Oh, 10th of June? Yeah. And and eggplant and peppers also, okay. but even later than that. Basil. Basil yeah. later than that. Yeah. What do you have for acres altogether? We have uh, 55 acres altogether. It's 37 on this side. This land behind us belongs to Fishers and Wildlife, yeah. as does that over there. So this field is carved this way. And then we go a ways up the road in the woods. Um, and then we have across the street, it starts about right there and goes up to there's another house that's uh, 18 acres. It's a swath. Uh, Properties of America came in. They were a nasty, uh, <laughs> one of those, uh, what are they called? Developers? Well, yeah, worse than that, though. There's a word for people who come in and just ho they chopped up a whole bunch of area. And they were going to sell three lots to people. And one of the lots had a stone wall right in the middle of it for housing. But luckily, they wouldn't perk. So we bought 18 <laughs> acres about <laughs> about three years later across the street. So um, so we have a, another field over there that's about, um, it's a one-acre field. And we have about a half of it in vegetables. And the chickens are over there ranging right now. And then a little bit of area up, up there where we have blueberries and such. But mostly what you see is on this side of the farm.